Are, are we on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let's make the phone check. Lights. Lights. Cameras. This is Swanky. This is Lifestyle. This is Culture. Welcome to the social center of everything culture. Culture Daily. part of the show with uh you saw sefa doing that thing where fever lovely video i like it by all standards sark of course looking like the landlord of the video and moving on well today on the show we're talking about something very interesting the big conversation is focused on accra becoming an elitist city now we'll break it down shortly before i do that though don't forget smiling is very important you want to have a confident smile you have to use pepsodent um to brush your teeth day and night. And I'll tell you which particular brand to use. Use the Pepsodent Cavity Fighter because it is fortified with pro-fluoride and microcalcium ingredients that seals the tiny holes and invincible holes in your teeth. And it prevents cavities and keeps your teeth strong and your mouth very healthy overall. So, um, and don't forget, because every time you eat, food and sugars always get trapped between your teeth and it leads to tooth decay, gum disease, and in some cases, foul breath. Try the Pepsodent Charcoal or the Pep- Pepsodent Hairball, um, and both of them will give you results. All right? Um, there's more for you to know this morning. You can also discover a world of um, innovation, a world of luxury, and a world many of us dream about owning, which is the world of Bang & Olufsen. It's a particularly true brand in the ever-evolving realm of high-end electronics you might love to own. You can find the... the the showroom right here in Accra is on the Liberation Road, Atlantic Towers ground floor, where each passing day, month, and year, a variety of do-worthy equipment brought in um, home theaters, speakers, uh, headsets or headphones, soundbar products are always released. Bang and Olufsen like no one else. I'll be telling you more about what's also showing at Silverbed in a bit, but before that, let's jump into the conversation this morning. Now, you know, in recent times, what is happening? Accra has become the hot spot, or let's say Ghana has become the hot spot for, or the destination for a lot of, you know, uh, getaways, if I can say that. People leave their countries and they fly into Ghana in the December. We had a December in, in GH activities. I wonder what's going to happen this year without Afro Nation. It's not, it's not going to happen in Ghana this year, right? Nope. It's going oh, to Nigeria. But, but guess what? I'm very sure we'll fill that void because either way, people still want to come and jam in Ghana. Now, Part or main part of the activities is the connection between the or the activities that go around um, happening with the with the nightclubs, you know, and the pubs and the joints. They're the one that sort of keep us from day one to day two to day three to day four. Yes, they are the major events, but the nightlife in Ghana, trust me, is something else. Or even particularly speaking in Accra, but it also boils down to how big your pocket is. Mm. And how much you can afford to spend and where and what kind of activities on what budget. You do recall that earlier this year, sometime in January, we had a good conversation on nightlife in Accra with the, um, with, the, with the people who connect the nightlife, who handle the nightlife, the clubs, the MCs. We had Black Volta, we had Johnny Stone, we had um, MC... Um, Oh man, his name slipped me. Handsome fella. Handsome fella join us as well on the show. You remember, right? And they mm-hmm. give us some insights into how it happens. However, we are amplifying this conversation to another level, a space where it talks more about the things happening and exactly what it's going to cost us to be able to party hard in Accra. As a candidate, I have to put this conversation on you because you have been to every place in the <laughs> capital city. <laughs> Almost. It's almost. Mm-hmm. Wow, she's confessing <laughs> there. <laughs> it's Accra becoming an elitist city, a place where a certain high-end people can only enjoy and afford to, um, you know, have a taste of all the things, the social activities that happen in the city. Are we becoming like a New York or a Vegas? A Vegas? Venice. Venice. I haven't been there yet, though. Mm-hmm. So do not associate mm-hmm. me with mm-hmm. Amsterdam, Red Light District. <laughs> I mean, the fun side of it. <laughs> have, you, have you been there before? Yeah, I've been to Vegas. I no, mean, I mean red light. In Amsterdam? Yeah. No, but that's on my bucket list. Oh, my days. It is, it is. I mean, it's I similar to, to um, Oxford Street, right? It's, it's, um, Except well, the as, aside, are from, the fact that, okay, aside okay. from the fact that, <laughs> aside from what happens there, mm-hmm. I like the way they have turned that 
into a very professional business, mm -hmm. a space where it's allowed, like you know, it's very upscale, upscale, to sing. classy. Yes, where it's like you're allowed to sing. Okay. <laughs> Classy, yeah. well, not necessarily no. the high end classy, but it's like it's it's fun because it's one thing to the next. I can't go into detail, but it's one thing to the next in various ways you can consume the content I go to detail, that they, uh, they create. No. Well, I, I want to see the picture, like paint the picture for me because what right. I think about so when I hear about the, the evening, district, yeah, various houses, nice, lovely streets. You're walking and there are various ways of consuming the content that is actually created there. Mm -hmm. Some through a peephole, slot in the coin, a peephole opens, you consume the content. Okay. Others, you pay and enter. Ladies in all seductive clothing, standing in beautiful, um, uh, what you call them, glasses. The windows. Dis windows. Okay. Yes, displaying themselves, you know, showing off. And, uh, and I mean, it's, it's well organized. You okay. Know, that's, that's the beauty of it. It's well organized. So... Are they standing on the road at all? Um, Do they stand on the road? Well, if not necessarily on the road, but maybe they're in front, in front of their cubicles okay. so that when you engage them, you can just follow uh, them take inside. Them. Yeah. But it's an expensive city to be in as well. Mm. However, it looks like Accra is uh, sort of, I wouldn't say imitating, but we are gravitating towards uh, becoming an elitist city where now things are becoming, the kind of activities, social activities happening are very expensive. And it seems you must be deep in your pocket to be able to uh, enjoy yourself in a crowd. We want to talk about this, whether we are getting there in the first place. But let me start off with Candid. You've been around the world, mm -hmm. been around the city, mm -hmm. your experiences, and what do you think about this conversation? So I, I understand the elitism of what it looks like, but I think there are still options for people that aren't able to necessarily afford like... Um, who who's I feel like who is there? Who's there? Let me see. So you know, you guys talked to um, the uh, the strip club guy. It's not a strip club. The gentleman's club. Um, Silver Fox. Silver right. Fox, okay. Yeah. So Silver Fox. If we take Silver Fox uh, and we same. talk about hot same. gossip, right? There's still the same type of you know activities going on at the same at the same different places. But there's one that's a little bit more upscale, more expensive, more, more elite. People will go to that one. But if you're not able to afford it, you still have another option. So I feel like there's still plenty of options for people that don't necessarily have the money to go to like the luxury or the high class. There places. will always be that conversation that, of course, there will be places for the low Your end budget. or the yeah. high end or the mid budgets, you know, and all that. But the thing is that it looks like anybody looking to invest into the space of hospitality in Ghana mm -hmm. is not necessarily considering a place for the low end. Okay, mm -hmm. they're going to. If I'm going more to go expensive. into food. If I'm going to go into a restaurant, then I might as well find a place and set up. And now there are loads of them. I mean, I can mention some of them that are opening. And now the aesthetics that are being put in the place mm -hmm. is determining the kind of people that are going to come in there, the kind of food they're going to be serving in there. You know, they can even put the 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 most expensive place in the in the slum, mm -hmm. but you still pay high end to 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 access it. That's what that's that's just what the cry is becoming now. Okay, yeah, like even with the buildings, when people are building houses or apartments, they're not for the local people. Mm -hmm. They're for foreigners or people that uh, have the money. Across. Yeah. Yes. So it yeah, moves away from from food restaurant into right. now accommodation. Yeah, you're right. You know, nobody's building any apartments or uh, creating apartments. You know, accommod accommodation services that would 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 be for persons who can afford it at a four hundred cities a month. No. They're doing it for two thousand dollars a month. Yeah, you know it's it's, and, and that's why I think I I no no shade, mm -hmm. but I think that's 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 what happens when you have the the diaspora, mm -hmm. you know, coming to town to you know to spend their their foreign currencies, you know, and obviously that influences how you price your your products. Um, I mean, to be very honest, some of us or Ghanaians. When we notice that the person is out of town, we try to cheat them. You know, we try to, if, for example, I, I walk into Cyril's shop and I've lived in Ghana all my life and Cyril knows I'm Ghanaian and I ask Cyril, Cyril, how much do you take for a haircut? Mm -hmm. And Cyril tells me, okay, I charge maybe 30 CDs or 40 CDs, right, for a haircut. Then um, Jay Foley enters the same barbering shop, but Jay Foley is from, is from Florida, you know, and he asks Cyril, Cyril, how much do you take for a haircut? Yeah, there are not any. 
<laughs> you know, she they charge she had, more weighty prices. You get, took your eye and, and, and I realized that most yeah. of the ladies actually complain when it comes to the braiding, right? Yeah, I see a lot of diaspora ladies talk about because I, I'm told it's very expensive to very braid expensive. In, 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 yeah. in America or in the Western world. So when they come to Ghana, they try to find like you know. So it's, the conversation has always been, oh, give give the the vendors what they are worth, as against paying for the right mm-hmm. service or paying paying the right amount for the service because if it comes to i mean paying for your hair and you are paying two thousand dollars to braid your hair quote unquote right in in the states and you come to ghana you're looking to pay maybe under two thousand dollars which yeah maybe yeah two hundred dollars or maybe even a hundred dollar of depending on the on the exchange rate but you don't see that you know you see people increasing their prices because this december season mm-hmm. foreigners are in town so let's make quick money let's make quick cash mm-hmm. and th- and sometimes when they do that they don't come back to the original prices anymore they leave it there because they know they have their customers oh if you won't pay we have customers who are going to come, come down do and yeah. pay you get me and mind you people are not only coming to this country in december only okay so on, on the back of that can we look at that let, let me take us back a, a bit can we look at the factors that um the factors that would would make a city become an elitist city. What are the things that would uh, feed into it becoming an expensive place or a place for a certain high end market to a, a persons to want to you know thrive? What are the things? I know one the influx of uh, the diaspora will be will be definitely mm-hmm. will be key. Tourism, yeah. Do we have? Can, is that becoming? I don't know if there's, if there's any other serial or any other factors that, that would. Do this one yeah, go ahead. I'm listening. Any other factors that will make a city become an expensive place to live? I in? I think one for me is we have a lot of opportunistic pricing in Accra, just like you said. They read you. What car you showed up in, mm-hmm. how you are dressed, whether you spoke tree, pigeon, or English, mm-hmm. all that determines the price you are going to get. And that's opportunistic pricing. That's mm-hmm. just sham business. Mm-hmm. And that only exists because we don't have price standardization. Mm-hmm. Price standardization should tell us that a one bedroom with these amenities, that amenities, should not exceed this price. So the discrepancy of the the landlord. Um, is, Sir, let me cut you in. This is a, a, a quite of an emergency. No problem. Um, real quickly. So, um, um, Na Kimberly Na um, Na Kwale. Oh, it's her birthday today. Uh, <laughs> she's in the car. She's listening to us. She's dropping out and jumping into into class. So, uh, this is a shout out. I'm going out to you. Happy birthday. She she turns thirteen okay. today. Yes. I know she has a big party coming. Mommy and Daddy put a big party together for her. You know, coming into her teens now. So, happy birthday to you. Have fun and enjoy your day today in school. Now you can get into class. Happy okay. Birthday. All right, Siri, happy birthday. You. Happy birthday now. <laughs> Yeah, it's real. Yeah, so I was saying that opportunistic pricing, lack of standardization, and basically a lot of people who should not be reaching out for people who are trying to shop outside their 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 brackets, right? So you walk into a, a showroom, you will know whether you belong there or not. Because the people who belong in the showroom don't complain about showroom mm-hmm. prices. You're right. So the moment you enter some place, you're like, hey, now it's rice and it's, you like, go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You understand? Excuse me. But like, and we have that attitude a lot that I want to go to Olele's restaurant, mm. right? But on my terms. And when I go to Olele's restaurant, he says he's selling rice and chicken for 100 cities a plate. I have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm. Even though I can go to Foley's and buy my check, check for 25 and go home. So people want to have the, the the luxury experience but on their budget right. expectation which is totally unrealistic right. and we don't do this when we travel when Ghanaians travel they know when to shop where to shop they know where to stay they know where to to eat they know everything to do right according to their budget it's only in Ghana that people go where they know the thing is expensive and try and make a point like they deserve a cheaper cost so if you are for example with um the housing scenario that uh, Olele gave. If you're walking into Laboni or Cantonments or Airport City or wherever, like... 
excuse me to say, you're not going to get La Paz prices. Right. But I think the other issue when it comes to that is if I'm going to a restaurant that is a four or five star restaurant and I know what I'm walking into, I shouldn't be getting one star customer service. Like I should not be getting one star service. And I feel like I'm even being a burden to you by being there. Yeah, that's because nobody gives reviews in Ghana. We what? Think, yeah, nobody does that. I like, don't what, think what, people care. That's what I really think it is. It's like go somewhere else and no, you don't want to be care. there. Somebody, if oh. you're if you review, if, if you see. Outside, they understand the, the value of feedback. So when somebody comes to your restaurant and they go and write on Facebook that, when Charlemagne came to Ghana, mm -hmm. because he was a foreigner and he had to do it at the end of the year and he has a big platform, and he said um, uh, 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 one restaurant held him up for three hours before he got his food. Everybody was like, oh. It happens every day. Right, right, right. As I'm talking to you now, it's happening. Right. But we don't, do we talk about it? I mean, if you look at Google reviews, they do make reviews. No, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, when Charlemagne went to a restaurant and the restaurant messed up mm -hmm. and provided horrible customer service, three hours, blah, 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 it didn't need to be Charlemagne to be a problem. Right. You understand? Right. But every news station ran that story. Every blog ran that story. If we because were it was Charlemagne. Because it was Charlemagne and it was a foreigner. If we were running blog stories and making noise about every inch of horrible service we'd get, mm -hmm. nobody would uh, set up a restaurant and put uh, uh, reckless customer service people there. Mm -hmm. Because they know that the first person that walks in here and my waiter or my waitress is rude, mm -hmm. I'm going to get the heat of everybody. everybody. But we've become so complacent that we let it go. Ah, the way the girl bomb yeah. me, like I would tell them, but I just take my food mm -hmm. where I left. Like you for tell them. Okay. If I tell them, yeah. go Facebook, tell them, video them, bring the logo of the establishment, put it there. You know, then I've done up. it before. I've done it before. I'm not gonna That's what they do outside. Out, when somebody comes to eat at your but place. But I got a response that go somewhere else because somebody else is going to spend the money here. That's what the response was. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. Mm. Even from the owner, that's what the response was. Because, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say I have a big platform, but I do have a platform. Yeah. And I feel like people respect it, but it's also in the comments. People you know are saying why it's told normal. You, You're you, in Ghana. You, 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 you should expect you it. Know, you know why he told you to bounce? He told you to bounce because they, he knows there's no other repercussion. But if he knew that there were going to be 50 other use or somebody with a huge platform, how many followers you get from Twitter? Mm -hmm. 400 and something thousand. So half a million followers. If he knew that Jay Foley is going to post the name of this thing and say that their service is crap, and out of 400,000 people, even 50 people blacklisted his uh, restaurant, he would have been nice to Jay Foley. But would you do that? That's the question. And is that's that, the problem. Is it, Jay Foley would, would not do, do that. that? Uh, well, I, that did it, I did it for, um, I mean, I know we're not talking customer service, too, yeah. but I did it yeah. for... Um, <laughs> no, we have customer I, I, service ties for, into the pricing. Um, for a rider who was working with one of the delivery apps... When they, when they delivered my my pizza from ah, it was upside down. Uh, yeah, from, <laughs> from, from one of the pizza companies, you know, producers, and then the, the writer just bought the food, the, the pizza in a very bad condition. So I I put it up and I was like, okay, this is what, dear, I said, mm -hmm. dear, uh, you know, the app, this is what your writer did to me when I got my pizza from here, you know, and then and, and like Cyril said, the reaction was good, so they reached out to me. Uh, they apologized, you know, and uh, we, well, we moved on. They didn't bring me a new pizza though, but it's fine. But wow. like Cyril is saying, you know, it's it's um, it's if there'll be repercussions, then people will sit up. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you guys this, um, and this goes to everyone that if you are if you had money, budget to set up um, a, a, something in the space of hospitality in Ghana, mm -hmm. would you go for something for the masses, or you go for something for the elite market? Masses. Masses. So is Accra becoming an elite city? Because that's what is happening. Yes. People are establishing businesses or establishing you know, products. You know, I... Let me... Producing uh, certain products for... Let me... A, a, a type or a, a category Is there a real market for, for like, that? Yeah, let for me ask you a question. Because there are, okay. restaurants, there are restaurants in the heart of the city that, bro, you, 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 you may have your cash, you may have your mm. money. I mean, I, I don't determine how much you spend. But, bro, you step into this place, you know that, Charlie, mm. this, is, this is way above my budget. Do you get me? Whether you're an average I mean, guy, I went to this Chinese restaurant here. Yeah, just, just a one portion of this thing and this of that. No, you know, bro. You don't belong there, bro. You know what? bro. Yeah. Look, I think the conversation shouldn't even be whether we should be concerned or not, because obviously in other places we have we have those category of people, mm -hmm. right, or those category of services. But the concern is is becoming more and more like all the new ones that are coming. Exactly, right. more and more like. You're not having places that one can go to or activities that one can engage in 
for the average Ghanaian, mm -hmm. right? And Accra is supposed to be the capital where everybody is supposed to like migrate <laughs> from, yeah. from wherever to just come and look for, or it's just like Nigeria and, and Lagos, right? Mm -hmm. People try to get to Lagos because Lagos is where everything is happening, right? But we look at our economic situation, look at our economic challenges and the things that we have to deal with on the daily. And you look at some of these things that are springing up. We've, we've spoken about how even real estate, you know, like we see buildings springing up all yeah. the time. Only. Like every single yeah. time you pass away, if they're springing up. But money, who, are, who, who are people right. buying? You're not, right. you're not, you're right. you're not getting these apartments. Okay. Let me play the devil's advocate. One, there's too many people in Accra that don't belong in Accra. That's one. And it's the same for every capital, right? Rural to urban migration is a problem. There's been research on it over and over. I'm reading something now. A growing share of the capital's population has a migration background. Mm -hmm. Indeed, youth perceive Accra to be the epicenter of economic opportunities and exciting modern lifestyles. While many youth move to the city in search of employment, rural to urban migration does not only respond to economic push and poor factors to improve one's livelihood. The lifestyle of the capital is also crucial to the youth's successful social status. Furthermore, moving to the capital is generally not a strategic choice for youths to exit their rural situations. Example, agribusiness, etc. So we have a lot of people, mm -hmm. no skill set, mm -hmm. no, nothing apart from menial or physical labor to offer, right? Mm -hmm. Moving into Accra, but having to deal with Accra issues on accommodation, mm -hmm. transportation, mm -hmm. feeding, and all that. Right. If you take a taxi from here to, let's say, Accra Mall, and they say these days, probably going to tell you 40 cities or something, right? 40, 45 cities. Mm -hmm. And you are just coming from the back of Hohoi somewhere, mm -hmm. right? That is going to hit you as a shock, right? And that should tell you you don't belong to be taking taxis mm -hmm. up and down mm -hmm. Accra. If you went to New York, are you going to hail a cab and go on a 30-kilometer run in New York? No, I'm not. Joe. <laughs> I'm not going You'll to. hit the subway. Yes. Because I mean, that's what you can options, afford. But do rich people... No, hear me yes. out. The rich people in New York, the people who mm. belong in New York, yes. people who own property in New York, do business in New York, can afford parking in New York. Do they drive. complain about transportation in New York? No. No, but there's some they people don't. in New York who are obviously no. struggling to pay for that. You think, don't be in New York. That's what I'm saying. Right. But you right. also I can't mean, say that. You can't, you can't tell that they shouldn't be in New York. Yeah. They should be in Apple. They should be in Apple. So, I'm telling you because there's campus. There's campus. I can't also go to the city. Why do you want to? We have 30 minutes left. Let me just cut it in. Listen, Mali, Mali's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mali's fine. Okay. I'm there for, for you. Hear me out before I punch you. <laughs> no. <laughs> bro, I'm what bro, bro, bro. What are you wearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a shimmy. Holy shut up. <laughs> Listen, we need to be realistic and speak about the fact that there's a lot of mixed uh, um, uh, uh, social capital, economic capital in our cities, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody in Accra can afford the typical Accra lifestyle. That's why people say, and they go Accra, go do what? Go hustle. The person has declared from wherever they are coming that they are coming to Accra come and figure it out. to come and figure it out. <laughs> people go to New York to go hustle. People are not living in Manhattan, living their best life. It's a pool of blood, tears, Fair and enough. punches. It is. So Fair you enough. don't come to Accra from your, your rural background and expect that Accra will rather accommodate your, uh, 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 your pocket and what you can afford. If somebody has spent millions to build a six, five-star hotel, right, and a cup of coffee is 500 cities, leave it for the people who are making that kind of money and want to drink 500 city coffee. Don't go there they don't and be entitled. If they don't sell it. Exactly. Don't right. be entitled that because you are also in Accra, you should be able to go to restaurant A or mm -hmm. restaurant B. You understand? Go to uh, Miliki Kool. Let them milk the milk <laughs> for you. That is what that is what you can oh, afford, yeah. bro. When we go and we they go chop the food. <laughs> when have they not told me that uh, tilapia is sixty cities and I said she should give me uh, beef? No <laughs> eh? Nobody go tell you, <laughs> bro. And I pay. I'm somebody who pays myself. <laughs> So you that you don't have job proper do. What are you doing eating or asking about tilapia price? <laughs> Let's be honest with people and, right. and, and, and tell them. You're you get right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying. Listen, I went, well, the first time, well, when I went to London, uh -huh. right, Oxford Circus, right, when I was walking down, so I, said, I was shy. Yeah. Bro, if you've ever been to Oxford Circus, bro, Mr. London, 
Please amplify my voice. <laughs> Walking down the street. I mean, I mean, I shocked you. You say, Mr. London. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're big, you're big. Oh, if you've Mr. never been to London yeah, and they yeah, leave yeah, you yeah. on Oxford Circus that yes. walk, you, listen, you, you feel, your, you will feel yeah, like yeah, I don't belong yeah. here. It's like being in Dubai or something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Right. So let's day, not allow people to, this thing. to mm. come from all around and come to Accra and be shouting that uh, living in Accra is hard. We know. It was hard when you were coming. Right. It was hard when you were not here. Yeah. It's not going to become soft because you think a crash will open up to you. Mm -hmm. so We've closed. Yeah, we'll get to that. entrepreneur um, Mali Gavon joins us on the show. Good morning, Mali. How are you doing? How's it going, my brother? Long time. Yeah, and um, I mean, you, you guys just could spark the internet with this concept of fusing, you know, night fights, yes. late night fights yes. that we were watching on GTV yes. uh, yeah. in the early 80s <laughs> yes. <laughs> into modern day clubbing yes you know and this is something that's a typical a typical vegas um yes. typical yeah. uh yeah. you know like yeah. a very high-end place that yes. you find such activities and people find entertainment mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. you know um i don't know if it's boxing for uh featherweight and bantamweight and all but this is purely entertainment based right it's it's entertainment based but with um so first of all, it's good to see you guys, man. It's been and I'm, I'm even surprised I even pushed the question to that. Please hold on for a second. No <laughs> let's let's watch this video first. Okay. From Play Ghana, right? Play yeah, Ghana, Play yes. Ghana. Check this video out, and it's got the internet talking. This is entertainment on another level. Check. Streaming this show live on, uh, you know, on our socials as well. Definitely, this the, the music in the background will definitely flag us. No worries. Take us yeah. But, but yeah. So this is like this is like. Let's go. Well, that's the man himself, <laughs> the um, the ringmaster. <laughs> uh, uh, what's what's the guy who's, who who says who's? Get, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I I'll tell you. I forgot his name. Really. Don't do that, Joe. Jay, don't do that. This thing it disgraced me. I don't know what that name is. Bro, I don't even do the Siri thing. Oh, bro, oh, you know that? What's the name of the famous boxing announcer? Hey Siri. You don't go mind you. Competition. You think do me. Let's see what. Let's see what. Let's see. Oh, why? But you said hey Siri. No, 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 but no, because. <laughs> so, I'll tell you. I'm paying it as much as I tell you because I want you to. I literally finish. just muted my thing because I'm waiting for you. Uh, oh, okay. Let's finish okay. and I'll tell you. So, hey Siri. <laughs> hey. What's the name of the famous ring announcer? You take my prompt. <laughs> Michael Buffer. Yeah, one time. Yo, one time. Don't fight, time. One time. One time. One time. Don't jump this. You are lucky. We are a friend. What is the movie? Tell your series to talk to uh, all of this series. All of this series having a relationship problem with him. All right, he's, she's on a break. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so, ring announcer uh, Michael Buffer, aka yeah, Maoli Gava, was yeah, live, in the, live in the ring as well. You just saw the video on there. But this is a great concept. Tell us about this whole idea. Um, so I think we should probably start off by talking about the brand play itself, okay. which I guess informs everything everything that we do. And I was I was very fascinated when the conversation turned into elitist versus not, mm. um, because it's it's a thing that we've actually faced quite quite a bit. But I, I loved what he was talking about. Um, so play obviously exists outside of Ghana. It's a brand that's been started. It we started it uh, in Nigeria, and it's now. All over the world. So this is maybe the maybe fourth or fifth club unit. Okay. Um, okay. This just happened to be the one that I built. I built, built it with my Nigerian partner. So we uh, we own this one. I don't own the rest of them. Right. Um. Right. Just just this particular one. But it's right. still part of a bigger global network. So it's like a franchise. Something so, like that. Okay. Something right. like that. Yes. All still by the same. Uh, my partner Charles with Maliki. Charles okay. of Play. Um, okay. From Nigeria. Right. But point is, everything that Play does is meant to be aspirational, inspirational, and the whole concept is to put together like-minded people who want to do better with their lives. Mm. Whether you have money or you don't have money, it doesn't matter. As right. long as you want to have money, as long as you want to do better, it might not even be money, as long as you want to do better, we welcome everybody. Right. So it's not even about how much money you're going to come and spend. It's about just being there and actually being a part of that society, and we're all going to have fun and we all want to better ourselves. Mm. So the whole thing about the network is we jam fully, mm. but... For the most part, there's always business being done. Mm. We always like to have people who are like-minded people. So the CEOs, there's aspiring artists, there's bankers, there's farmers. It can be anything. Mm. But you can connect within that space. A farmer can meet somebody who is a 
angel investor and get mm. funding for his thing within our units like Fight Night and all of these things. So the whole point is put together a thing where everybody comes looking correct. Mm. We're all, whether you have the money or not, it doesn't mean you can't wear a suit. Level the playing ground. Level the playing ground. Yeah, I remember when we first started, everybody used to complain that why are we insisting that it's black tie? That people will not come because we're asking them to wear a suit. Mm. If you don't have a suit, it's okay. <laughs> No, no, no. We tell people, just look sharp. It's, at the end of the day, it's aspiration. If you can't afford a suit, it's not the biggest deal. You right. can wear a nice African caftan. Mm -hmm. Just look sharp right. and come through, and let's all really get into this whole thing and, and make it into an actual event. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole thing. And for play, that's literally what we do all the time. So it's not even just the fight night. The fight night is just what we've started in Ghana to sort of just introduce ourselves as a different mm -hmm. way to mm -hmm. actually jam and to do... Everybody can go to a nightclub. Everybody can pop bottles and do all of the right. things. Not many people confuse in different elements of life and entertainment. That's the same way true. Vegas adds um, circus yeah. activities. They add singers. They add all of those things. They add yeah. conventions. They add all of those things to the party level. And there's party and then there's serious business. So Let me ask this. Sure. Is this a matter of interest mm -hmm. on uh, the type of market to attract to a place? Um, I asked a question, you know, to the team that if you had funding yeah. and you were, you were to get into a business of, uh, you know, in the, let's say the restaurant or the club yes. business um, or food, mm -hmm. whichever, which would you go for? Would you go for one that feeds the masses where you have huge numbers, like, you know, some food joint, the mm -hmm. numbers mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. come there and mm -hmm. you're still making your money or preferably looking at the, you know, maybe the space you're in, you prefer to go for the elite? I wouldn't even say the elite, but I would not want to do what everyone else is doing. I've never really been that way. So okay. no matter what, I would want to be different in some way. So if there's a thousand people selling bread, I would probably want to do it in another way. Just oh, because yeah, there's already sure. people doing it, yeah, so why yeah. should I already go and do... And that's literally what we do. When we're building the place, everyone says, why do you make it so big? Every, Ghanaians like crowded spaces. Mm. Nobody will come. Mm. Why do you make it so tall? Why do you spend so much we spend? Mm. Incredible <laughs> amount of our lights. Uh, that's 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 the question. On our lights and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what like, we spent on is that. Is it separate? Yes, it it's separate. So okay. it's, it's, it's two units. There's Play Club, which mm -hmm. is the downstairs, and there's Lupita Rooftop, which is a restaurant um, lounge type of thing. So it's two different oh, okay. units. So right. Two one. different vibes, two okay. different units. We own both of them, but okay. two different units, yes. Okay. Okay. What Business-wise, what makes you choose the space? I guess you have to study every market and mm. then decide what's good. In Ghana, we don't have that many options. Um, okay. The only things that we do are we eat or we drink. Mm. Maybe some normal Mountain Avenue. <laughs> <you forget. laughs> how many how many cinemas? I lived in Nigeria for six years, and that was the one thing that I, I used to appreciate the most. There's there's at least a lot more to do. Mm -hmm. There's dozens of cinemas. Mm. So cinema going is an actual culture. You say on a Tuesday you're taking the family to go watch a film, and that's why the film industry is doing so much better mm -hmm. because they actually it's it's an actual activity. Yeah, you is. know, they'll say we're going out to watch this Nigeria. Forget about Avengers and everything. Put that to the side. They get excited when a Nigerian film is coming. Hey, Saturday I'm taking the whole family. We're gonna go watch a film. Mm. Wow. There's that. In Ghana, we can only go to Chobba and then, then we'll drink a little. We don't have parks. We don't have mm -hmm. um, a lot of galleries. Now there's a few galleries opening up and everything. So and it's about studying the market. Mm -hmm. And that's what the market in Ghana, un not unfortunately, happens to make available. So we did what we, we have a bar and we have a restaurant. Um, obviously, we venture into other businesses as well, but it's about studying the markets and doing what's what's best. And so, in studying the markets, this particular space where you find uh, a gap in filling, um, yes. networking, but networking differently. Yes, is it something that is common in our space? In our space, no, because for the most part, we've we've created this club culture where some people are excluded. Okay, where there okay. are people who want to go to the club, but they don't feel like they have a space where they can actually go and have a good time because we've turned this club into it has to be this bottle popping. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. if you're not, um, yeah, great point. If you're not a G boy, if you're not somebody who's going to spray yeah. something, then you shouldn't yeah. be there. Right. And it excludes people who might just have a regular. So at our fight night, for instance, mm. half the tables are corporate tables. People from some different banks, different oh, oil companies, right. and everything. They'll buy a table. They'll come with your whole team. They'll have a great time. They might not be in the club on a normal Friday, right. but it doesn't mean they don't enjoy the experience. Right. Yeah. So right. why limit all these people? Because we want this club thing to be a particular way. In Ghana, we love to do things because that's how it's being done. Mm. Oh, Ghana, that'd be how we do it. Why do you want to do them another way? Yeah. Nobody wears suits. Why do you want to force people to wear? If you don't want to, that's okay. Mm. We have this idea that we're all supposed to be best friends. Where everybody opens a club and you want the whole world to be there. The whole world doesn't have to be there. What has mm. been the feedback so far, you know, um, after this uh, play Ghana was opened? By God's grace, we actually opened with a bang. We only opened in December, which wow. was crazy. Yeah, we spent about three, four months building it. Um, and then we opened officially in December, and it was a roller coaster. I'm talking about everything just happened like that, okay. like that, like that, like that. Just one thing after the other. We had everybody come through. When we hosted Dave Chappelle, for me, that was one of the... Mm -hmm. 
Vegas because we were able to show that we could actually provide a vibe that was matching what he got. And all the Americans who were there, they were super impressed because this is the kind of experience that they get in New York and in mm. Vegas and everything. Mm. And that's what we were proud of. So now the thing is, how do we keep it up there? We started in this way. How do we continue to go in this way rather than say everybody else is doing this, let's also go do this. So mm. for us, we, we, we don't mind. We'll always do what we do. Those who connect with our vibe, they'll be there. Those who don't connect... I think I have an answer to my next question, but let me still ask it. With regards to tax benefits and Mm -hmm. uh, support from industry in any way, government, uh, you know, revenue (laughs) authorities and all those things, do you get anything to help? (laughs) 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 I I have an answer to you, but let me just ask. For for asking sake, you know. No, and that's the one thing in Ghana that I I, I truly wish that we can get over this hump. Mm. Um, You guys have seen what the Nigerian film industry is doing, not just the film, but the music industry. Mm. The money they take, you make money. Mm. You know, they say, um, meta soup na money kilam. Without that money, you can't go forward. And, Everyone here in Ghana is running away from investing in the things that actually do make us money. We're pretending like we're not seeing that all these people are cashing out billions all over the world mm. with music, mm. with entertainment, with creativity, mm. with art. And we're running away and pretending like it doesn't really happen. Mm. And everybody's um, a real estate developer. Everybody's not a real estate developer. I say for it's something. So <laughs> my, I say for it's something. So my, I say for it's something. I say for it's something. I say for it's something. I will trade the you my own. Then you give me your own. Yeah, man. Not, not, not just the government. I would hope that the corporate bodies can actually see what's going on the and corporate actually bodies, start yeah. again. I'll go back, because I, I lived in Nigeria, I only came back of like a year and a half ago. Mm. So most of my experiences in the last couple of years have been based in that system. Mm. And they figured it out a long time ago, that on my money, they just sit inside. Mm. So GT Bank, that's a whole bank, decided we're going to form an entertainment arm, that's in Dani TV. Mm. And we will focus on entertainment, we'll produce our own shows, we'll fund it, we'll market it and everything. Acceler- um, Access Bank also said, oh, these guys are sharp, they created Accelerate TV. Mm. UBA saw that some of these people are also sure they created Red TV. You think these banks are idiots that they're spending a lot of their own money to create their own shows, mm. market their own shows, and do all of these amazing things. Mm. They support. When there's an event, you go to GT Bank, to UBA, to access all of these things, it's they will awesome. actually support. Fashion brands, they will actually say, hey, take this money because I know that I'll make the money back. Mm. But over here, we're, we're still struggling. We're, we're still deceiving ourselves that entertainment doesn't make money. Which is very but, strange. But, our, but when our, people but make money, the first thing they do is entertain themselves. Exactly. Wonderful. Uh, so even it's, it's our entertainment wing is actually contributing to the to the, to the country's GDP. Which, by far, which, which by far, sense, by you know? far. We are currently at number three. If you look at it, you take out cocoa and gold. Look at that. Creative yeah. arts definitely yeah. contributes. It's a third contributing factor to the country's GDP. Yes. So it still doesn't make sense why you know. If the nightlife, the creativity, the music, the videos, the esports, if all these things get propelled and amplified and are now thriving, who is in charge? What demographic is now in charge of the economy? Millennial Gen Z. Do you think that our fathers and our mothers want that? No, no, they won't allow, they but, but you, 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 know, know, you didn't hear my question well. You don't even know how it is. You didn't hear, you know you didn't hear my question mm-hmm. well. Look at what controls our GDP now. Big, big, big business. Yeah. FMCGs, yeah. oil, gas, yeah. gold, blah, blah. Who yeah. controls all those? Yeah. The old, yeah, the old, the old people. people. Yeah. Now, music, arts, creative landscape, mus- uh, millennium, millennium, movies, yeah. light, yeah. night, life. If that yeah. becomes the, the controller of the economic flow of, of money around, who is in charge? I mean, imagine, so exactly so the imagine will Mali, still be in charge. Mali, the oldest, yeah. still based, be in charge. based on what you're saying, Mali's an MP. He would definitely bring a fight night into the parliament. You don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that, but if not even that, were shop, if you have five, they would still be making money. If you have right? five, if you have five Maulis. Maulis. UBA is not owned by a young kid. Listen, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think we're not? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 No, you're not hearing me. If you had five Maulis, right? Yeah. If you took Maoli, um, Eric, Mama everybody, Sadi, everybody, yeah. and let's say they controlled two billion mm-hmm. of our annual um, GDP, GDP yes. yeah. two billion, that is too much power. Mm. So, for, you, so, so, so you're saying that the see, old folks will not allow them to run? Is that what you're saying? Like they will frustrate them? Why do you want me to say it? Oh, they say it. Okay, yeah. Make up boss your brain. Make up boss your brain. No, I'm not losing it. Yeah. So just right. say it. Make up boss your well. brain. So I, I actually do understand everything that you're saying. Unfortunately, they don't really have a choice. <laughs> right now, where the place, they, where the stage, they, there's nothing that can stop what's coming. There's mm. absolutely nothing. We have never lived in a time where Africa has been cool. Mm. Never. Mm. This is the very first time that the world, they say everything be turn by turn. Yeah. So we've gone through moments where these people had their time to be cool. When I was in uni, I went to school in um, Pennsylvania. I remember it was, I wouldn't say embarrassing to be African, but 
you would never hear an African song at a party. Mm -hmm. You would never hear, even the black Americans, they don't want to be called African. 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 They would yeah. say, yeah, no, they're American and everything. Yeah, now separation. I have everybody calling me, Omar, yo, they've heard this new DeVito song and everybody wants to play um, this Rima song and everybody wants to, because now the eyes are on Africa. Beyonce wants to do her album um, uh, Black is something. Black is, Black um, is Chris Brown wants to come around. Yeah. Uh, this person wants to come around. Now everybody, everybody wants to be here because finally they're starting to realize that this is actually where it's at. Mm -hmm. And it's always been here. Mm -hmm. And we say they've just not been looking at us. So what's happening now? Nobody can stop it. Not the oldest, not the youngest. It's, it's, it's Nobody can incredible. stop reggae. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> just talking still about the elitist city, um, with, with all these economic factors that, yes. you know, that are contributing to how tough the, you know, the whole <laughs> country yeah, is, yeah. You know, the, the, the shambles we are in now, if I can say that, please, I'm sorry if I, I hate anybody, but um, how does that play into your space? Mm -hmm. Does it mm -hmm. limit the spenders? Does it um, rather get people the real spenders? So to come I won't out lie. Yeah, 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 I won't lie. It's it's been interesting navigating this new system because, for instance, when I when we started building the club, dollar was one is to six. Mm. At the time that I finished building the club, dollar was one is to fourteen point six, <laughs> and this is in a few months. Which means that when I was buying cement at maybe forty something, I finished and I was buying cement at about a hundred mm -hmm. cities. Yeah. So, obviously, that's an incredibly new landscape and everything. But the, the place always levels out. And like we said, it's not about, you don't have to come and spend 50,000 cities at the club. If you come in your capacity be 10 cities for that particular day, spend it, look around and see that more people they jam. Go home and work, and then hopefully you come back the next time with be a thousand. Be inspired. Yeah, be, <laughs> come, be inspired, go home, work hard, and then, and then also come. So, I won't lie, it's been tough. Mm. But that's the thing about finding the right network. Mm -hmm. Guy, let's not deceive ourselves. Money they go now. Let's not. Right. Yeah. Yeah, let's, not mean, let's not deceive ourselves. Yeah. And it's because we've excluded some certain people who we feel that they might not want to be in the club. But they get money and they actually want to jam. So mm. we just created a space where it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Mm. Last, last, come, be inspired, look around home. Oh, my God, this is big. This mm. is everything. If you have the money, spend it. If you don't have the money, go home and work and then come mm. back and then spend. Sure. And I think it's a generational thing, too. What you were saying about people going places and being upset they can't afford things or things are expensive. My life, they're so yeah. yeah. When there used to be a club called uh, around His Majesty, it's called Tahari Night Club, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Back mm -hmm. in the day. When we would go to Tahari, there used to be a spot opposite the road from Tahari. We we'll go to Tahari and go and sit at the spot. And they go watch. And enjoy ourselves. When we see the plane thing, we will drink the local, because that's what we can afford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we are watching, see how many babies are getting in the club. And by the time enough nice girls have they made it to the club, the club inside. we, yeah, we but, make like yeah, flowers. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so I don't need to come into the club and buy your champagne. No, I'm all, no, I floated in, bro. And you look at the club. Everybody used to go to the club first. When I was buying for bottles, I go, hey, I'm super hot song. I don't feel any type of way, but the generation has changed now the quote unquote the guy let me not use broke the guy who can't afford to come and pop bottles and spray money is standing their hands in pocket yep. upset in the club yes mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the problem i love that you, yeah. you got them say you've seen it <laughs> the, the, we used to respect ourselves those exactly days, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no like those days before i had a car sometimes oh you go take trotsky you get down you get down at a particular point and then you walk to the yeah. club yeah. you be normal yeah. don't worry yeah. now until i bought my that. own car and then mm. i decided oh yeah and i bought but before then i respect i don't get the money what am i doing mm -hmm. how do you draw the, the the fine lines between pressure you know like the, the new word in town amongst the youth is pressure actually mm -hmm. pressure yeah Accra, you like i get to the, we are trying to inspire people to to work hard and you know yeah. but the fine line between that and on unnecessary pressure how do how do we reconcile that i cannot draw the line for you it's up to you it's your own personal decision you have to learn to respect yourself or you don't like you said if mm. you don't have the money you have no business going mm. there frowning mm. that somebody's popping a ten thousand cd champagne mm. bottle you mm. have no business doing that mm. Mm. i feel you mm. nobody's forcing you that's a hard like, truth across the street. A generational question hard truth yeah <laughs> nobody like i said i when when i didn't have it i respected myself those days i don't get money i'll buy potato and uh, some fish right. i would budget three cd yeah and then now i decided okay i can spend 50 cds on a meal there right was a time where i said i can only spend three cities 50 pesos on a meal right if you know normal nobody mm. go if you draw that line for you but imagine me being angry back then mm. that i cannot buy food at uh labadi beach which is maybe 350 cities that money no come yet misplaced anger. Life, it's, it's misplaced anger you're, you're angry <laughs> at the wrong for person. entitlement misplaced you're you're anger. you're angry at the wrong person mm. uh, and social media mm. we're yes. missing yes. the fact that people do things for validation yeah, back right then up. there was no social media 
So true, going to the true, club true, was not true. focused on how can I make people see I'm I am something I'm not. Yes. Yes. It was about your own experience of the place. Yes. So if you found yourself that I don't have enough money, you're looking at the people who have money and figuring out how you can be like them. Mm. But now on social media, one, you've told all of us you are going to Club A. Yes. Right, you show up there. Everybody who is following you, all five thousand people, yeah, snap are like, let's see what they see Ole, Ole, let's see what Ole Ole will go and do, and they see what you're drinking. And now you snap drink. what so you're you are drinking. being judged. Yeah. Now you even snap your bill when your bill is exactly. over. You send, oh yeah. my god, exactly. guys, look at what yeah. I spent. So there's judgment on every yeah. single step you're taking. It didn't used to be like that. It didn't used to be like that. So people yeah. who are feeling angry and entitled and all that, it's because they've kind of elevated themselves to some pseudo reality. Yes. On social because media. Social media. Has and when they get into the real world, by, by yeah. 20 exactly. Or more life and in the real world, it like doesn't that. match. And then instead of being realistic, they get upset about it. That means Accra has always been what it is. Yes. The people, that's what I'm saying. As the people who are coming and the people who are here who are not being real with themselves, <laughs> you understand. No. Off, off air, we are talking about how high life became. What yeah, 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 yeah. The name High Life. It yeah. was, it was, a, it was named in a way to make it appealing to the elitist and the uh, aristocrats of the, the capital. So even initially, when the name was was propagated, yeah. those on the outskirts felt like it was a diss at them, like mm -hmm. yeah, 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 high. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? It took a while and commercialization and everything for the music to spread across, yeah. and High Life become a, 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 a yeah, thing. What, what, what so. Say? Charlie, look, social media, dear me, I'm saying that social media <laughs> has gone through the fabric of our reality, north to south. Yes. It's just East to west. What is already let, let, me, let me come to, I mean, the, I've been wanting to talk about the, about the fight night. I love the idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are some of these, let, I don't know if you are, there are other crazy activities that you've lined up, you know, to engage in there. And then let's talk about the fight nights. Yes. So, like I said, this fight night was just our way of introducing ourselves that we're a different crop in terms of yes we're a club but we've always been more than a club so this is just a way of saying we can do something different um it's not just the boxing so for instance even on the final we do mma we do um there's muay thai there's, there's all sorts of things that we try to encourage there's other sports that we're bringing into this and there's other performance there's other okay i wouldn't say art exhibitions or art showings but our aim is just to to make things more fun in a different way. Mm -hmm. So we have art exhibitions that, for instance, that we're planning that will be parties. Mm -hmm. Where it's an art exhibit where everybody's looking at the art and everything, but it's going to be a club jam. Where, again, it's not about spraying money per se, it's about appreciating the arts, but we also appreciate the music. Mm -hmm. um, we have trips that we do outside of the country because we love to limit ourselves to Ghana and like limit mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So Play always organizes at least twice a year trips to other locations and we, we subsidize it so other people can come join us and everything just so we 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 move around and again it's aspirational mm -hmm. not everybody might be able to go for that but you can always join the next one and the next one some of them we even give it give it out for free so for us that's honestly our main mission um i personally am on a serious mission to do things differently in ghana mm -hmm. I'm, I'm beyond frustrated that's why i moved from ghana in the first place beyond frustrated that we continue to try to do things in the same way mm -hmm. over and over and the reason i joined the film industry was because the few people who were doing well, uh, Majid and Ajete and all of these Just people who were doing, the only thing that we would do is sit in our houses and point and laugh. And it is the most ridiculous thing that I have ever heard. Mm. Oh, ha, 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 look at how bad the film is. I can see the boom. Oh, yeah. ha, ha, ha. Ghanaian film, dear. Yeah. Ghanaian film, dear. And, that's, and this is Ghanaians doing it. Mm. If you Ghanaians aren't going to find a way to like your own films, who in the world are you waiting to come and like mm. your film for right. you? Is it mm. the Koreans who should come and like your mm. film? Mm. I know, right? It's the most ridiculous it's thing that I heard. Yeah. So when I got the chance, I was still working as an accountant, and it just happened to be something that I could switch to. I thought it was going to be for a few weeks. It ended up being for years. Wow. But the whole idea was, fam, rather than sitting back and continuing to say, ha, 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 how are we all so going to come to together yeah. and actually change it? And I see you guys have done it within like the media space, mm -hmm. what he's been able to do. Fam, what you've been able to do from being a, um, you could have said it to be a regular radio journalist and done it the way everybody else mm -hmm. was doing. But you grew your brand. You, you grew what it meant to actually be within the space and everything. And everybody is changing. And that's why we're all here. We're not going to sit down and say, oh, that's how we do it in Ghana. So, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. And if we learn from other countries, I'd, America is great because of Hollywood, because mm -hmm. they found a machine to mm -hmm. propagate their greatness. Yeah. Where when the film is over, Independence Day, they took their shoes and then they put American flag. You right. see it blowing in the wind. Even when aliens come, aliens know America. Aliens America, is, America, America is the, America the, the because capital of the world. Right. Because they, again, they will yeah. push <laughs> themselves. Right? Nigeria decided we will push ourselves, <laughs> our music. We forget about um, um, right. We will like our music, and then you guys will follow. Mm -hmm. We're still waiting for before Grammy will yeah, get something before we now say. It's because oh we God, have self. We have we have low self esteem. 
It is as true. a people. It is true. But at some I'm point, we out. would all have to rise and be yes. like, yeah, so this Everything is Everything Ghanaian is so. bad. Look, we bring telenovelas and we <clears throat> take pride in dubbing to you over there. Yeah, I find it so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> and yet nobody will watch... Alejandro, now send me now. Exactly. And yes, nobody will watch... Nobody will watch, <laughs> nobody will watch the local telenovela. Yeah. The reason I became successful in Nigeria is because I went there to shoot a one-year show. <laughs> mm. um, it's called Hodge for, for Mnet. Right. Mm -hmm. I went there for a few weeks. I thought I was going to stay. I stayed for one full year because I didn't realize that it would be one-year shoot. Wow. But it ended. it was like a tinsel but they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. at that point nobody was doing that but they said no guys let's do it mm. and everything and what happened was the Nigerians came around and said all of us love this together mm. and that blew up the whole thing where now instead of watching Alejandro and everything they would watch Hush instead mm -hmm. of watching Alejandro they would now watch the mm -hmm. if you go to Africa Magic Showcase and everything they have all these shows that people truly get yeah. into I'm yeah. not talking about just everybody from whether you're a bank manager to a yeah. seamstress mm -hmm. everybody watches yeah. it because effort was put into it. Mm -hmm. And at That's some point, nice. we're hoping that we'll all be continuing to put effort into and, our things. And then like our own, man, we cannot keep waiting for other people. No, at all. I see we're always discussing Grammy. They're going, we're taking concern us with Grammy. Well, <laughs> why, why does it matter? Yeah. Why does it matter? We like validation. It's, it's, why? We, we yeah, always need validation. validation. Look, Grammy and, and then what? And, <laughs> it's and two then things, what? Right. They the think creators, they're going to blow. The creators and, and the people who can lead the change are, are addicted to validation. Mm -hmm. And the people who can open the doors and bring the finance and allow these opportunities to thrive are also limited by their perception of themselves. Mm. I know people who have worked on Ghanaian TV series, telenovela style stuff, mm -hmm. original Ghanaian scripts, mm -hmm. tree, ever, pigeon, everything. Yeah. And if you see the way they are to draw blood from stone yes. to get people to give platform yeah. after spending their own money in investing in things, it blows your mind because you've done this like, okay, let me go and give it to Jay Foley. And Jay Foley is sitting in whatever office at whatever network or whatever bank or whatever. And the brain, the brain cannot fathom that a Ghanaian made ABC yes. can be propelled to succeed to the extent of an Avengers. Mm -hmm. or Look Why at Black, everything in Black Panther is Africa. Right. Yeah. Just that it was made yeah. in America. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was a blockbuster globally. Yeah. And Africans cannot make that of themselves. Oh, they had Africans just, playing just... those parts too. So, and Africans play yeah. those parts. Okay, so man, on the back of what Sue is saying, so mm -hmm. how are how are people uh, accepting this culture that you've created? There's some people. So... Are they loving it, and are they supporting it for the experience sake, yes. or are we being the real Ghanaians? <laughs> <laughs> so mostly, it's been people being real Ghanaians. For instance, there was a gentleman who made the comment about we, we like to pretend to like what, and I'm saying why. Come and see for yourself. The people who were there truly loved it. Mm -hmm. We love the fact that we get to wear our suits, wear our bow ties, sit around, drink some fine whiskey or whatever, even if it's water that you want to drink, and then actually have premium fun. Those who are there, they love it. Those who are watching from afar assume that it's an mm -hmm. elitist and that don't want to be your matter. That's what it looks like. Mm. But that, and that's what we're saying. For play, we right. don't mind. We will continue to put our standard over here. Mm -hmm. If you want to come and join, no problem. If mm -hmm. you feel like it's too something, no problem. Because people say, oh, why are you forcing people to wear a suit? You don't have to wear the suit. You can wear an Af a nice African attire if you have want. Have you to seen a Ghanaian sure. Just look the part. <laughs> just look the part. That's all. Just, just, just look, look the, the part. part. That's yeah. all. No. But that's all a good we're saying is, all the time, please don't wear it? shorts. We don't do any bad. All we're saying, okay. you can wear shorts anyway. All we're saying is, please don't wear slippers and come. We want mm. it to be aspirational. We want you to come and be in a place where... Is be how the thing will happen. Make it easy for I mean, people to I network. Mean, this girl. Yeah. It's That's because they know. Listen, listen, because the people that are there, listen. listen. To ten, they see the lights, the white lights with the for like with the buy elegant yeah. for down five city five city. Yeah. You like someone down with some things like where you on where they wear short school. But <laughs> see, if I spend if I spend three million dollar uh, <laughs> buy some lights, I mean, if the lights go go on, make it for your 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 nylon. And for us, as for me, for me particularly, I actually wouldn't mind if the place was half empty and it's the right people who are there. Than it's mm, totally right, with the thing sure. because again, I told you, you started when this thing was dollars one is to six, I finished when it was one is to 14.6. If we mm. talk about what we spent on that place, we're not even going to mm, get there. Yeah. So, for you to expect that I've spent all this money to build a Something proper like premium this, yeah. place and put in all this, we brought in people from Lebanon to come and do the design and everything. Um, and then after that, you think we should just lower the standards and let everybody do what they so want. So that you can feel good about yourself. That's so that you can feel good about yourself. That's absolutely ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> Forget about the money part. Forget about the money part. If you don't have the money, it's okay. Yeah. You can come and buy beer. Like I said, respect yourself. Yeah. You can come and buy a regular drink Bro. if you want. And then just look around and say, okay, in a year, I will also do this. I will yeah. also That's the problem. People this. can't see better and see themselves becoming that. Yes. And when that gap shows up, 
then they become negative. A, an optimistic person would look at play and be like, man, I need to get my hustle up. That's give me all. A, give me a That's seat, all. show up. That's but somebody all. who is pessimistic and probably yeah, unmotivated and can't achieve them. anything looks at it and goes, nah, there no more treachery. <laughs> <there." laughs> and that's it. So for me, it just tells you who the person is. You are either aspirational or you are defeatist. Yes. And my, unfortunately for us, we have more defeatist people in our midst <laughs> than us. Look, you buy a car. Right. A car been a fully aqua tunnel. Problem. <laughs> you buy a phone. Buy anywhere the way you go buy this phone. Uh, you you and, buy some food. Buy you lunch cake away. You go buy this. Everything, um, somebody has something to say. Something. I believe Duncan Williams made this. I, I will keep comparing the, the Ghana and Nigeria because for, for how close we are and the fact that we love each other and everything, mm. the fact that we're refusing to learn from the good parts of them is, is, is baffling. He made this comment that when you're in, if you had a Ghana and a, and a Nigerian sitting next to each other yeah. and a car pulls up, Jay Foley pulls up in a, in a range, mm. Niger, um, a Nigerian a oh, yeah, would be yeah, like, yeah. ah, Baba, ah, Baba. Show no, me bless now. me. No, 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 no. Like ah, I, I one day like you now. Like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, one day God will also bless me. Baba, like they, obviously they would like you yeah. to drop something, but they're saying, hey, God will also bless me so I can be yeah. like you. Right. Aspiration. Yeah, we'll see Jay. We know Jay. Right. We'll look to the ah. Don't be that Jay Foley. Yeah, right. Like, 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 and they're quick to show you. That makes the yeah, night even want to open up too. Yeah, you know what I mean, bro? Two, 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 two are the two, same yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that un until we defeat that part of us on the inside, which makes it hard for us to be happy for other people, mm. it's almost going to be. Bro, important. just pay attention when you're in the room, right? And somebody popular or successful shows up. The covert tie. Uh huh. Yes. Mm. You see the way they see the way they came for him <laughs> because they were ready. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Meanwhile, before then, they knew that the, the car quiet. was nice. They yeah. were quiet. They knew that like, you were just waiting for somebody to something fall. to happen. Yeah. Now he's like us. Ha! That's what they want. <laughs> and the first thing a Ghanaian will tell you is that only oh, hope. Then times when they they stay down, they want to bring you down. Yeah, you are living somewhere now. Yes. Yeah. Then times they stay down, so man. So what, what? <laughs> bro? So what? Jesus said from manger. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus well, started yeah. in the manger and ended up in heaven. <laughs> Listen. Bro, so if the was at down, so man, and now he's at Trasaku, or he's <laughs> a number one okay, crossword, man. you knowing him from 1984, if I am bang, yeah. at this time, only that time you play ball for ever. <laughs> and the Ghanaian who has so much pride to say this out loud to other people. Because that guy, he won't make you know say it to know him. No, he won't make you know say because he has experienced your your with with yeah, uh, a, a situation yeah. with you yeah. right whatever special thing you have achieved today he's entitled it, to it yes one <laughs> and it is not special in his eyes mm. because he has seen you mm -hmm. at a less fortunate time mm. and that is just him trying to bring you down to his level so he can feel good about, him about himself yeah, yeah. until we stop that we're never gonna go yeah. anywhere it's it's never crap. never never gonna it's go crap. anywhere i'm well, sorry but like while it's, I'm it's here, here, i probably use this use this chance to 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 uh, i wouldn't say challenge but mm. Um, for us, especially for me, who's who's seen what it is, what our neighbors are doing. Mm. Again, don't let's not get into this. Nigeria has a lot of things that's wrong with their country, a right. lot. Right. But they have a lot that is also going right. So yeah. let's not pretend like there's something. And let's all learn from each other. They they can also learn from us. But the idea that we need to work against each other is so strange. Mm. It's much easier to work together. Mm -hmm. The first big blockbuster Nigerian film, Wedding Party, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which made hundreds of thousands, when we didn't even think that African films could make that. It was only successful because people came together. Mm. Mama Budu, who is one of the biggest out there, said, no, I will work with other people. She worked with, I think, Congo Studio. She worked with, like, four or five different people. One group brought equipment. One group bought this. this. They all came together and said, Omar, we will do this thing. And they did it big. And that's what spurred the whole thing. So we at Play were attempting to do the same thing. We started a while ago, but as usual in Ghana, we haven't gotten the same support. We announced wow. a couple of weeks ago that we are willing to make a $1 million investment into the entertainment industry, specifically film. Mm. That's a $4 million. That is our, that's our part. We will make that commitment. Play already has Play Network Studios, which mm. already exists in Nigeria. Mm. Um, if you look on Netflix, um, they're the ones, the ones that made Glamour Girls, uh, Living in Bondage, the, the right. sequel, all of those. Oh, wow. You can just Google Play Network Studios, mm -hmm. and you'll see the... Right now, there's a project being shot, Hijack 93, which is a, an old film. Again, mm. go online and just check it out. Mm. The point I'm making is we are trying to bring that kind of push to Ghana, and that's my whole mission right here. I lived in Nigeria for six years. I'm trying to leverage on the fact that we can leverage on what they're doing and the fact that we have a more serene atmosphere. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And together, there's mm -hmm. so much that we yeah. can do. Mm. So we can only do the one million. We, we, we're looking for partners. This is weeks later. Not a single person has actually come to say, oh, well, we would like to join you guys to wow. do this. Because we said, alone, we cannot do it.
Mm. If other people would come and say, even though we're going to commit just 100,000, and then 10 different people come in, it's more than possible. Mm. But we're all sitting here like it's impossible. So what we're saying is we are going to do that part. With or without any help, we will mm -hmm. still go forward and mm. we'll do We've already announced the, the million dollar investment thing. Probably With bad. or without, we will go forward. If other Ghanaians would like to join us, we would be so incredibly happy <laughs> to just join forces. If not, we, you, you go right, feed day back, right. and then when yeah. we finish, they you say, look at these people again. So, hundred thousand, we are going to take my range, flex you. No? <laughs> <laughs> make, 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 come give you, make we do movie. And right. we will change the entire bro, landscape of bro, not just Ghanaian film, but bro, African bro, film. I, bro, bro, I won't bring the range to the premiere. You won't bring the range, no problem. Yeah, no, and then make the right serial arrives to premiere. You know what? You know what? Buy five range. No. You know, I want the red that I'm going to buy. And, and they make noise nice for social media, so I need them now. Right. The, I can't wait. Where's the wall? Yes. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's <laughs> right. our thing. Wow. Yeah. Once we're looking for partners, we're looking for like minded people to come together and just say, or oh, more or less, all and come together. Here. And do this. So, so the project is to raise time. a million dollars. No, 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 no. We have the million. We're, we're, okay. we're committing the million to the film space. Okay. In terms of that's what we will spend from our side. We're looking for the project that can work, and we need some governmental support because the scale of the project is a little huge. It's a little huge, so we'll need some governmental support. So we're trying to tie that down, and then we'll announce that part. However... How do people get their stories to you? Know? Or do you have projects you've already picked up? And we are always welcome. We have projects, yes, but somebody might have something that is absolutely more fantastic. So we're more, we're more than open. Um, people can reach out to me directly or to the Play Network Studios um, page um, just to say this is what I also have. Um, what we're saying is we were going to do it anyway. We would like some help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because together it's always easier. But if we want to do it, if Ghanaians don't want to partner, then it's all good. I, I, don't, know I don't know what else. I don't know what else we mean, can say. Well. I don't. I don't know what else we can <laughs> say apart from because we could move it again. Just because I'm Ghanaian, so I spoke to my Nigerian partners and I said, "Hey, listen, I believe this is the this is the best way to do it. We were going to do it in SA and in Kenya." And I'm saying, "Why not?" Yeah. You know, I think there here. was a lady that came here. I think her name might, might be Tiffany. She came from the States maybe last year. And she just talked on a panel during Essence Festival. And she was saying that she was trying to... Oh, Angela White. Angela, Angela White, right. Angela White who I actually, I actually met Angela. I was with her on the film set. She came with Chris Atto. They actually mm -hmm. co-produced a film together. Yeah. And they also tried to do a similar thing. They, right. they came in with a bit of support and, and everything. they weren't successful. Frustration. I've, I've, done, I've seen this three times. Mm. I worked on the set of Beasts of No Nations when yes. they shot it here. Yeah. Um, but not as a, I worked as a production manager. I worked for the production manager. So I was mm. on there with them for like three months. Went to go for Adria to shoot mm. there with Idris and everything for a long time. Um, Ghana almost disgraced us. I won't lie. Wow. Yeah. yeah, Ghana almost disgraced us. These people brought about 100 people from the States yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. They were ready. Almost, they ready were ready. It, it took us blood, sweat, and tears to get that film done. What, 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 you say, what, what was the challenge there? Was it the... Uh... Infrastructure. So first of all, we shot in Koforidia. And right. the scale on which we were operating, we finished all the money in, the, in Koforidia. So, because we, we have to use the local banks. I'm talking about we're spending hundreds of thousands of cities every week. Ooh. So we have to do wire transfers and it was impossible. So mm -hmm. part of my job was to drive to Accra, come and get 100,000 cities and in a box to and then wow. bring it back to Koforidia because we don't have that level of... Um, we need certain equipment mm -hmm. and everything. You cannot get it in Koforidia. Of course. So we would have to... We had to bring in equipment from Ivory Coast and from Togo and all sorts of things. And all these things, you need support. And when the government themselves are now making it harder for you... And look at what happened with Beasts of No Nations. Yeah. If the government had attached themselves properly to it, we would have been part of a fantastic story. And rather, we actually fought the opposite direction. Angela White is saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. She tried. Now she's going to South Africa. Uh, some Italians came here and wanted to shoot a dance film hmm. a while back. They wanted to shoot one of those, f like, full, uh, you got yeah. served type of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They came with equipment. They came, wow. These guys came with, with hope and everything. Yeah. Oh, my God. After a week, well, they like, went this back is Ghana. They <laughs> went back in tears. <laughs> tears. So this day, if you, I think it's called Heartbeat. If you look on, like, if you look on my IMDb, you see it there as one of my credits. But the film never came out. Mm. We frustrated those people and we ran them back to the thing. So at wow. some point, I don't know when we're going to stop being our own enemies. But I mean, Bruh. I don't know. I don't I get, know what I'm supposed to say. Safe. Yeah, man. I don't know when we're gonna start being our own enemies. But you we want will be there. We will try. You want the youth to control the economic power of this country. Are you sure? No, but at least, um, Cyril, look at it this way. If you have the youth in, 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 in power, they will at least with the youth that we have twist our hair like yeah, you, you <laughs> and we tattoo, <laughs> and we go and drink, and them. the youth are smoking on Instagram, the older and drinking red earrings, and buying earrings. And swallowing pills yeah. and smoking and balloon. balloon. But we also you we also have to the I'm, I'm talking Bro, like you and I I'm talking the like the leader. I'm talking like not the not. I'm not talking uh, about to the eyes. I'm talking to the eyes of you being at the top there. <laughs> yeah. You want the economic strength of this country <laughs> to go to the people who are tattooing, <laughs> drinking balloon, 
buying coffee is trying boiling it. To you talk to him direct. I know who you want to talk about. I don't want to. But then, but then, why? What about the other people who controls Hollywood? It's the old white people. Yes, the, old yeah, the people. honest truth. But they, they figured out that we can leverage these young people and still yeah. make the money. So it's proxy. okay, use us. We use can us run this thing by proxy. Money, right. To say that you won't do anything, yeah. that's what that one for me is, for me is strange. Yeah. But I'm a Harry Goodall. Point is, guys. They don't see the value. Come and jam up, play. Yeah. Everyone is welcome. The guy who made that tweet, his name is Chum, so I don't know. Um, personally, I want to invite him. Chum. The guy who... Oh, Chumesi. Yes. yes. Chumesi, you're Chum. personally invited. Bottles, bottles are on us. Oh, please feel on. free. Feel, please feel free to come. If you don't, if you don't have a suit, I will send you a stylist and we'll, we will... Come we'll, on, Chumesi. If you post him, I'll also comment on that. I, no, no. I'm, reasons, because I'm just teasing. No, I said, oh, tell him, bro, you don't need to... Come, come and well, see for yourself. What did, what did he do? He wrote something. So, Chum, let me see. Marley, we're coming to you. We're coming to you on the 16th. I was saying, no, we not have just three the birthdays. Oh, yeah, three we have three birthdays, birthdays actually. We're oh, doing we really have our birthdays on so there. I think maybe Are we, we playing? Do we'll blow it up. Yeah. Hey, Foley, birthday's coming up. Yeah, 40 all we're playing. Four, zero. All of us. All three of us. No way. Yeah. No way. We got all three of us. So, can we just announce it here? Let's go. Hey. Can we just announce so it here? Pick the date. Yes. <laughs> so we pick a date and she we're celebrating. Ready she was ready yesterday. We're celebrating a big... No, because first of all, 14 will be beans. Mm. Yeah. And mm. for me specifically, just having the respect for you, probably what you from, Chair. Like in terms oh. of you guys are the ones Flowers, who, flowers. No, no, we flower matter. It's, it's just, it's just yeah, being real. real. Like, yeah. See, thanks, you, thanks. listen, I'm be... be Big no, boys, I'm so the no, big boys. No, 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 no. Now, now we this strasaco, then this big <laughs> one. So my point is, I feel like people should be celebrated in the way that they deserve to yeah, be celebrated. Yeah. So I don't make people go do some small party for somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. I want to say let's do it big, and we're doing 40th at play this month, and it's gonna be huge. And we're gonna yeah, like, truly, truly celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna truly Got celebrate it. the people. Daily. Who need to be, okay. We, we do. Who need to be celebrated. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll announce it later. I agree. Oh, we'll announce it later. Jake, I, we'll Jake, announce it later. Oh, Jake. Oh, Jake. Oh, Jake. Y'all made with tissues. Y'all made with tissues. No, but it's gonna be big. It's, it's, it's gonna. Fam, we have one life. We, this is Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, no get rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. 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 We love yeah. to behave like when we're done, and we're gonna okay. okay we'll so come back and do we'll it better. Come back and do it better. We yeah. have mm. one life. So you reckless youth with your twisted hair. You want to control <laughs> the economy? Yeah, you put it back at feel some way. I go. I go. I go. I was like, I was like, Charlie. I can't enter any offices looking like this. They'll be all right, my brother. They'll be all right. But seriously, happy birthday in advance. Yeah, it's crazy. Forty years, man. Honestly, yeah. uh, Molly, this has been great having you on the Thank show. Thank you so, so, yeah, so great much. Great conversation. I wish you could have gone on and on and on, but our time is really Apologies up. Apologies for being since, late, yeah. Since we're talking movies, I mean, Silverbed is showing some movies. So, <laughs> okay. all the Hollywood movies are all showing on Silverbed. Our only uh, cinema franchise that we have. So Which well is a big shame. It. Yeah. Mm. We, we hope that we can change yeah, that yeah. later yeah. on, but mm -hmm. yeah. big, big, big shame. But well, so Jardim. you can catch some movies on there. There are social Silverbed Gunner. Check it out as well, and uh, you can get all the updates you need. But Molly, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Congratulations to you and your team, too. The 14th, Thank you so much. The 16th and the 28th. Uh, let's see what, 24th. Tw 24th. Yeah. I'm, I'm 24th. 16th. I'm 16th. 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 So we will combine all of them combine and we'll them. do yeah. like the biggest, Bash. the biggest. And again, we want people to see and be like, Shreya, Shreya, look, look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Right. It's, it's going right. to right. 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 go and find the suits, please. Oh, it'll not be suits matter. You're yeah, going to make, <laughs> make people vex with Jay. I mean, this, this birthday one, it'll not be suits matter. You can wear whatever you want. It's in the suits matter. You're good. So let's say this. For the next fight night, we would love to have all of you there. Oh, sweet. Where's the next Just for people, we like to keep it. Uh, okay. It, it's not often. It's once every couple of months. Oh, okay. Because okay. It, it's it's usually special. Okay. Um, we're trying to take it to the level. The last one we did in Nigeria was with Floyd Mayweather. Okay. Oh, and uh, right. with uh, Kamaru Usman. Okay. So okay. There, there are literally no limits to what we okay. can do with it. We're just saying we wanted to start and then see how far we how can far. take it. And now that it's been received properly, we will now go the extra mile and bring in the fighters and do all of those things. So once we have the button, that will right. announce the next fight night. Yeah. But wow. until then, we have different jams every. We're doing the Yanya this weekend. Right. Um, which should be fun. And then after oh. that... We'll it's coming to town. Yeah, that's no, coming though. So, <laughs> those, are, yeah, so those of you, those of you who want info, those of you who want info, at least you know where to find it. So you can ask us some certain questions. Ghanaians know. You before you know. You yeah. have the questions. But at least possible you can bring him here. When he comes, we'll figure it out. I yeah, did for you. We'll, we'll love to have him here. When he comes, we'll figure it out. I, yeah. I did for you. Just give me the, the options and I'll speak. Exactly. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll try to make Exclusive. it work. I did for you. Thank you so much. I did for you. You know, it's a full circle moment for me because Marley was actually my senior in school. Imagine. Oh, really? Alpha Beta. I think you down. That's the one boy. Yeah, so yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. it's a full circle. All right, great. <laughs> Marley, thank you so much. We're, we're discussing the details after the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, fill you, we'll fill you in on the details after the show. I mean, just uh, keep on our socials so we let you know how it's going to go. Like, um, it's going to be. 40 years at play. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're back here tomorrow, same time, 7 to 10 a.m. Um, on Culture Daily, Serial, Candid, Olele. A.K.A. A- 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 DC boy. Yeah. Thank you so much. I know I'm from DC. Yeah, I know we are. Those days for last stop. Those days for last stop. We need to take us. Then get some yawa shoe set. Kush, kush, kush. Come out, busy. Ah, Siro, tell us, baby. Boy. Yeah. I'm from school. Me and Kush, they climb mango tree. So I can't be on TV again. Meet me and see something. Charlie, one love, guys. One love. Bless you.